अगस्त को जब भारत ने चंद्रमा पर तिरंगा फहराया उस दिन को अब हिंदुस्तान नेशनल स्पेस डे के रूप में मनाया जाएगा It's made a National Space Day on 23rd of August with the theme Touching Lives While Touching the Moon, India's Space Saga. India also becomes the fourth country to land on the moon and first to land at its uh, South Pole. And this happened on 23rd August 2023. The stupendous feat achieved by ISRO scientists under the leadership of Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. On the special broadcast, we are very honoured, very pleased to have Professor Satyanarayan Chakravarti with us from uh, the Faculty in Aerospace Engineering Department, IIT Madras, and also co-founder of many of the high-profile startups at IIT Madras. Let's welcome Professor Satyanarayan on this uh, segment. Professor Satyanarayan, thank you very much, sir. You and your thank team, you. we must tell our viewers that you and your team uh, are the, the brains behind e-plane, Hydroloop, uh, and uh, Agnikul uh, tech project and the 3D printed rocket which was launched from ISRO which caught uh, national attention. It's such a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Let me uh, begin by congratulating you and your team once again. Uh, on the very uh, first National Space Day, uh, Professor Narayan, how do you see India's space surge, particularly in the last decade? Uh, you know, the humble beginnings of 1960s, there are very interesting visuals of Indian scientists operating from a very first mission control room in Kerala and transporting these rocket parts in bicycle and bullock cart till finally landing on moon's south pole. What a fantastic journey. Yeah. So if I were to actually hop, skip and jump from the humble beginnings to the last decade, I would say there are essentially three epochs. Uh, the 1963 to 1970, uh, the... Vikram Sarabhai years, where, when you actually saw all of those bicycle rides and bullock cart rides and all of that stuff. And then the 1970 onwards to, let's say, about the 19, early 1990s, yes. uh, where Satish Dhawan came in and he actually made a organization out of ISRO, in mm -hmm. my view. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he's the one who actually streamlined the whole process and figured out the plan for the next couple of decades. Mm -hmm. and, he is the one who actually got the SLV-3 and the ASLV off the mark. The ASLV used to actually be a, a lot of failure. SLV used to be a failure. But I was actually a school kid and a college kid at that time. Mm -hmm. And what I found even then was they were actually planning for the PSLV. And the ASLV failures were what I call as well-crafted failures from where they would learn how to do the PSLV right. Okay. And that actually stood them in very good stead. Now we can see... For all, all the world to see, as a matter of fact, that we are actually now marching towards like about 60 consecutive successful launches, a record that nobody else has. Mm. And that's what has actually happened all the way from 1994 through to 2024 uh, with increasing launch frequencies from 2014 onwards. Yes. So In fact, yes. The, yeah, this yeah. is the three stages, I would say, has happened uh, you know, from the early beginnings. Yes. But what has happened in the last decade is actually even more, even more fabulous. Yes. You mentioned 2014. Now, 2014 onwards, would you agree uh, the way it marked a stellar decade for India in space with a big push to very, very ambitious missions? Now, out of 424, at least 424 foreign satellites launched by India, 300 plus satellites, in fact, 389 roughly, were sent up in the last nine years of the current administration. We also see the way space budget has more than, uh, you know, doubled to give more impetus to the space sector. What do you think has, what do you think can be attributed to this tremendous space surge in last one decade? What was missing well, earlier? Well, you know, uh, two or three things. Number one, I think space captures the imagination of the public. And uh, that's actually very, very important in a democracy. And I think the prime minister actually captured that very well. And... Uh, 
and and for him full credit credit to him because he actually fully utilized the fact that the the prime minister's office the prime minister's position is actually directly impacting the space uh, department of space uh, you know historically and uh, he actually gave so much push and he's actually utilized it in his in his election campaigns if you look mm. at what is you know the, like for example the publicity material from the government forget about even the party right even the government actually front end space significantly towards you know uh, the the nation's uh, progress and that's actually a showcase that a lot of indians i mean pretty much all indians are very proud about and that's a sensation that uh, has, has been capitalized and it's a, it's it's for good because space definitely actually marks an advancement mm -hmm. in science and technology for a country that like like no other and uh, uh, that's something that's very important for the pride of young people and their imagination and their motivation and the inspiration that they get. Yes. Uh, so that's actually what I feel has been the key factor in the whole. And and these missions, uh, uh, and and particularly the missions that revolutionized India's space sector, Mangalyaan, uh, showcasing India's ability to successfully yeah. realize the Mars mission or the complex mission to Mars in the very first attempt, followed by Absolutely. Chandrayaan one and two and the way two panned out finally culminating in chandrayaan three putting right. national pride on moon and then within two months we were talking about aditya l1 getting closer to the sun what a fantastic yes. consistency especially uh, this this last few years that we have seen what do you think these how were these breakthroughs possible well i think I, I i would start the credit from satish dhawan from 1970 who actually laid the foundation for isro now, what you're what you're to understand is, among all the uh, organizations that we know of, private or public, doesn't matter whether it's actually private or public, ISRO actually stands tall. It stands out as an extremely professional organization, hmm. and they are extremely data driven. When they take decisions, they actually look for data to base their decisions on, and they are a very open organization. I have actually sat through many many of the reviews of many of their projects. And, and they actually go around the room asking everyone for their uh, views. In science, they actually want to look at things objectively. That has stood them in very good stead. That is number one. Second, the kind of pumping of uh, funding that is that has actually gone consistently at these. Because one of the problems that we have had as a democracy in the past is kind of dragging our feet on asking questions like, is space important for a developing country? Uh, you know, do we have to go to the moon? Do we have to go to, the, go to Mars? Because mm. starting from Vikram Sarabhai's times, we have this uh, idea that space has to definitely improve only the, the average Indian's life, which is fair. And about 90% of all of that effort goes into that, uh, that, that particular aspect. But the last 10% is actually what actually takes the cake. Okay. For us to, to go to the moon right now, go, go, to, go to Mars and then put man right. on the moon, and all that stuff is actually more important than the yes. run of the just going to the near Earth orbit. Yes, sir. And uh, Prime Minister Modi's clarion call in February 2024, I think it was 27th of February, which actually set the tone for India's very own space mission with the spectacular launch of Gaganyaan. So uh, if you could just share some insights of Gaganyaan, this is going to be another significant step cementing India's space prowess globally. Correct. Absolutely. I, in fact, technically speaking, the Gaganyaan is actually the last frontier for Indian space technology to come up at, uh, at par with uh, those other a few space barring countries in the world, right? So if you now look at what other people have achieved, uh, barring maybe you, uh, uh, you know, Europe and uh, Japan being the other space barring countries that do not have a, a human space program, we have had the US, we have had the USSR followed by Russia, and we have had China. And now we, we are actually got, going to be fourth in line to conquer that particular frontier. Mm. With that, our entire technology suite of space technologies that are that is required for achieving anything is complete and that we expect will actually happen next year and it's going to be an extremely proud moment for every indian do you think it's going to be a game-changing moment for india as far as its uh, positioning in the so-called space uh, space sector elite nations uh, earlier those nations which dominated the discourse but india has broken that domination and it's a force to reckon with coming up in the space sector yes well, we need to actually look at this very, very objectively and then understand the significance. What is going to happen when India actually puts humans in space is to highlight 
the frugality and the technical competence with which we do this. I'll just dial back quickly to you know, highlight what we are talking about. The Chandrayaan-3 landing right on the moon, on the, on, the, on the south pole of the moon, never done before the first place, was actually a highlight because we have packed so much artificial intelligence into it like never before. Nobody else has actually packed any artificial intelligence into a landing of a, a lander on the moon. And, right. and uh, ISRO actually did that. That is kind of like conquering a final frontier on the landing ahead of everybody else. And when we do this in the moon, pro in, in, the, in, the, in the human space program, we will do this in style. And we will also actually be able to showcase that we do the most advanced tech, the most frugally. That will position ourselves to actually command a global leadership in this area. And right, that's sir. what will get people to stand up and watch what we are doing. Okay. And with that, uh, government's Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, or self-reliance vision in the space sector, Antariksh mein Atmanirbhar Bharat, mm -hmm. uh, this Indian space sector has grown tremendously. Do you think we've recognized our inherent potential wherein the privatization of the space sector uh, is going to assume a very important role in times to come, sir? Correct. So there are two parts to you know, the Atmanirbhar Bharat story on space. Number one, is the push on the technological side, which is the Mangalyaan, Chandrayaan, Gaganyaan, that series. That's actually very, very important. I don't want to miss that out when I'm now talking about the, the global uh, leadership, global domination. Mm. But the other side is the commercialization part where the privatization is actually allowing us to conquer going from 2% at the beginning of this decade on the space economy that India has been part of to 10%, that is actually the Prime Minister's goal and, and, and his vision by the end of the decade. And that is going to be possible only when we are able to scale with significant private participation. And that's exactly what ISRO has now aligned with the establishment of the InSpace. Yes, uh, that's InSpace now and promoting. NSIL, yes, and right. NSIL, yes. Yeah, absolutely, both of them, right? And that is fundamentally trying to unleash the kind of capacity that we can uh, assure in with private sector participation. And that's that's something that the government has actually had a very good sense on and uh, has been pushing so hard. Yes. So basically, uh, pushing the envelope or pushing the space frontiers, at the same time, pushing this whole capacity building with institutions like InSpace and NSIL, uh, uh, who, you know, they have their job cut out for them. And since we are talking about that, a quick one also, Professor, on the Space Policy 2023. Uh, do you think that signifies a quantum leap uh, towards India's new space era? So, so let's just uh, understand that very clearly, right? So the the, the uh, you know the COVID uh, you know outbreak hmm. uh, in uh, in May of 2020, the finance minister actually you know unveiled a a, a, a package for the country, and along that the, she actually uh, described how the space tech sector is actually going to be opened up. Nobody expected that coming from there at that particular moment, yes. and that extremely timely for uh, for us to be able to say hey there is hope in what we are going to do in the future uh, amidst all of this despair mm. and from there ISRO actually built us up and then the in space and the NSIL was established and then the icing on the cake was uh, the, the story was complete with the 2023 space policy where everything is now up for grabs we can actually set up private launch pads we can actually have private launch vehicles we can have private launch where we can have private satellites everything actually can be done and is through in space and nsil are actually there to support this massive expansion of capacity within the country hmm. so this is this is actually uh, really the height of what can be thought of and uh, the space policy is an actually that way a very very complete document in that sense yes you know uh, you're talking about the satellite launch in 2017 isro set a record of launching 104 satellites i'm sure right. Uh, and then the launcher and then the very next year in 2018 we were looking at launching 31 satellites in one go and in 2020 isro launched three space aircrafts with the space so you see this is such a i mean it's so consistent and you are setting the records isro uh professor satinarayanman final question so there is so much one can really talk about but uh, because of the paucity of time we really need to call it off uh, you know short uh, your final words like uh, India's space sector, how do you see it poised the way we've gone in the last nine years, the decade and so on? Yes. So, uh, I mean, I'm actually proud as an Indian, not just as a jingoism, 
right I, right now if i were if if i were any aerospace engineer anywhere in the world hmm. and i have to actually ask myself where would i want to be it would be india because the 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 momentum is actually on a huge upswing here both in terms of scaling new heights in technology as well as uh, you know privatization and commercialization on a much larger scale so we are we are actually in the middle of 2024 and when you now get to 2030, by the end of this decade, you will see that we are actually a, a, a very a formidable space power. And all of that stuff is actually happening right in front of our eyes while we're celebrating this first anniversary of uh, the moon landing as a, as a national space day, very appropriately. Hmm. Uh, I'm actually extremely upbeat about this. Sir, so here's wishing you all the very best to you and your team at IIT Madras for your future collaborations with ISRO. It was such a pleasure talking to you, Professor Satyanarayan. In fact, the way India has landed its pride on the moon and India continues to push the frontiers as far as space is concerned and scripting history in space itself. Professor Satyanarayan, thank you very much, sir, for joining us on this special broadcast. Thank you so much for having me. The pleasure was mine. Space a global commercial hub. शुक्र भी इसरो के लक्ष्यों में से एक है 2035 तक अंतरिक्ष में भारत का अपना स्पेस स्टेशन होगा जो हमें स्पेस के अज्ञात विस्तार को जानने में मदद करेगा इतना ही नहीं इसी अमृत काम में भारत का एस्ट्रोनॉट भारत के अपने रॉकेट से चंद्रमा पर भी उतरकर दिखाएगा